It is difficult to imagine harmony between Prince Edward and his nephew William, when he himself has been having tense conflicts with King Charles. Just like his father, Prince William harbored an unnamed discomfort every time he interacted with Prince Edward, which you can spot at royal gatherings. Experts suggest that some unfortunate events occurred when William was a child that caused him and Edward to hate each other deeply. To know more about this tense relationship, don't miss our video. Right now, to understand Prince Edward's relationship with Prince William, we need to trace back to the early dynamics within the royal family, particularly during and after the marriage of King Charles III, then Prince Charles, and Diana Spencer. Prince Edward, the youngest son of Queen Elizabeth II, was just 17 years old when Charles and Diana wed in 1981. At that time, Diana was a fresh and vibrant addition to the royal family, and her relationship with her new in-laws, including Edward, began to take shape. Initially, Diana was charmed by the young Edward. According to reports by E! News, she found him to be endearing and enjoyed his company. However, this initial warmth did not seem to translate into a lasting bond. Ingrid Seward, a well-regarded royal biographer, highlighted that while Edward found Diana to be fine, he had a more substantial connection with Sarah Ferguson, who was then married to Prince Andrew. Seward pointed out that Edward and Sarah, known affectionately as Fergie, developed a close relationship, which was characterized by their mutual affection and shared interests. Their friendship was notable, with Fergie even going out of her way to meet Edward for lunch. This close relationship between Edward and Fergie was a stark contrast to his more distant and, at times, awkward interactions with Diana. Fergie, with her youthful energy and genuine interest in Edward's life, seemed to be a more natural companion for him compared to Diana, who, despite her charm, was navigating her complex role within the royal family. The relationship between Edward and Diana remained somewhat aloof, and this distance became more pronounced following Diana's tragic death in 1997. According to the Channel 5 documentary, Paxman on the Queen's Children, Edward's response to the national mourning was less than sympathetic. When asked to visit the Book of Condolences set up in Diana's honor and to engage with the mourners, Edward initially refused. Dickie Arbiter, a former press secretary for the royal family, recounted that Edward's response was somewhat dismissive. He said, No, I'm not going to go. I'm going to go with my brother this afternoon. This statement indicated Edward's reluctance to participate in the public grieving process, which was seen as a significant and emotionally charged moment for the nation. Edward made a shocking decision about William at his 1999 wedding. Royal weddings are indeed monumental events, often encapsulating the spirit and style of the era. Prince Edward's wedding to Sophie, Countess of Wessex, on June 19, 1999, was a quintessential example, embodying the elegance and grandeur expected of such occasions. As the only royal couple among Queen Elizabeth II's four children who have remained married, Edward and Sophie's union holds a unique place in royal history. However, their wedding also became notable for an unusual incident involving Edward's nephew, Prince William. An unearthed report from Express reveals a curious episode involving the wedding photos. According to this report, Edward was not entirely pleased with how Prince William appeared in the official wedding photographs. The specific issue Edward had was with William's expression in the images. Sir Geoffrey Shakerley, the wedding photographer, revealed that Edward felt William did not look his best and requested alterations to the photographs. Edward's dissatisfaction stemmed from what he perceived as a lack of joy on William's face. Shakerly recounted that Edward's request led to digital modifications of William's likeness. Prince Edward said he didn't think Prince William looked absolutely his best, so digitally we were able to put in another picture of Prince William from one of the other shots where he is smiling and laughing, Shakerly explained. This intervention was quite unusual, as it involved altering official photographs to present a more favorable image of a royal family member.
Vikram Dodd of The Guardian, noted that in the original photographs, William exhibited what was described as an apparent scowl. This expression was interpreted as a lapse in the otherwise joyful demeanor expected at such a celebratory event. However, Shakerly's assistant, Robert Simpson, contradicted this interpretation, asserting that William was indeed jubilant throughout the wedding and the day in general. The scowl was attributed to William's timing, as he had glanced down momentarily while the photograph was being taken, inadvertently creating a less-than-ideal expression. Things got worse between William and Edward while the young prince was in college. By 2001, Prince Edward's career aspirations had led him to a venture in the film industry. He established his own production company, Ardent, which, unfortunately, struggled to achieve commercial success. In a desperate bid to salvage his floundering enterprise, Edward sought to produce a program that would feature his nephew, Prince William, who was then a student at St. Andrews University. At the time, William was carefully managing his privacy as he navigated university life. The young prince had in place strict privacy agreements with the university to shield him from the intrusive gaze of the media and paparazzi, allowing him to experience a normal student life without constant public scrutiny. This arrangement was crucial for William, who was keen on maintaining a degree of normalcy and privacy. Edward's decision to feature William in his film project thus became a point of contention. Robert Jobson, in his 2006 book William's Princess, revealed that the program was seen as a last-ditch effort to keep Ardent afloat amidst financial difficulties. Edward's decision to involve William was driven by the desperation to make the venture successful, but it came at a significant cost to their relationship. William was reportedly furious about the intrusion into his private life. Jobson described William's reaction, noting that he felt his uncle's actions had jeopardized the delicate balance between St. James's Palace and the media. The prince feared that Edward's actions could undermine the carefully cultivated relationship he had with the press, potentially disrupting his ability to maintain a low profile while at university. This breach of privacy was seen as a direct threat to the equilibrium he had worked hard to establish. The fallout from this incident was swift and intense. Prince Charles, William's father, was understandably outraged by the disruption to his son's private life. Jobson recounts that Charles reacted with considerable anger, reflecting the seriousness with which the family viewed the breach of privacy and its potential ramifications. The relationship between King Charles III and his younger brother, Prince Edward, has long been marked by tension and discord, a dynamic that has frequently surfaced in public and private life. Their strained relationship reached a particularly high point of conflict in the early 2000s, a period that highlighted the deep-seated rivalries and misunderstandings within the royal family. The backdrop to this period of discord includes long-standing reports of jealousy and rivalry between Charles and Edward. Their sibling relationship has often been overshadowed by public scrutiny and personal grievances, with tensions frequently making headlines. The strain between the brothers was exacerbated by Edward's ambitious yet troubled foray into the film industry through his production company, Ardent. The pivotal incident that escalated their conflict occurred in 2001, when Edward, struggling to revive his struggling company, decided to feature Prince William in a documentary while he was a student at St. Andrews University. This decision was made despite William's strict privacy agreements with the university, designed to shield him from media intrusion and preserve his normal student experience. Robert Jobson's 2006 book, William's Princess, provides a detailed account of the fallout from this incident. According to Jobson, Charles's reaction was one of intense anger and frustration. The now monarch was reportedly furious when Edward brought a camera crew onto the St. Andrews campus, disrupting William's carefully maintained privacy. This breach was perceived as a direct threat to the harmony between the royal family and the press, and Charles's response was severe. 
Jobson recounted that Charles's frustration reached a boiling point, leading him to demand that Queen Elizabeth II take decisive action. Charles insisted that Edward be forced to choose between his public duties and his television production endeavors. This demand was fueled by the belief that Ardent, often viewed as a vanity project dependent on Edward's royal status, was compromising not only William's privacy, but also the integrity of the royal family's image. The fallout from this incident was profound. Charles's relationship with Edward, already fraught with tension, plummeted to an all-time low, according to Jobson. The public nature of Charles's criticism of his brother was especially striking. Royal family members typically maintain a veneer of unity and diplomacy, avoiding public disputes. However, in this case, Charles broke from tradition, openly expressing his disappointment and frustration. A royal spokeswoman conveyed Charles's sentiments in blunt terms, stating that he was disappointed, very much so. Jobson further elaborated that behind closed doors, the situation was even more severe. The term incandescent was used to describe Charles's rage, and it was reported that he had a heated telephone conversation with Edward, where he tore into his younger brother over the matter. The aftermath of Prince Edward's decision to involve Prince William in his production company's project at St. Andrew's University was disastrous for both his professional and personal relationships. Edward's move not only angered his brother, King Charles III, but it also precipitated the downfall of Edward's television production company, Ardent. Robert Jobson, in his 2006 book William's Princess, detailed the consequences of Edward's actions. The intrusion into William's private life was seen as a blatant disregard for the young prince's need for privacy, a situation that King Charles responded to with intense frustration. The public and royal backlash was severe, and it led to a broader erosion of support for Edward's ventures. Ardent, Edward's production company, had already been struggling for some time. According to Jobson, the company faced little support from the royal family, even before the St. Andrews incident. The controversy surrounding Edward's decision to film William was the tipping point that led to Ardent's unraveling. Edward's father, the Duke of Edinburgh, who had previously been supportive and had agreed to an on-camera interview as a personal favor to his son, could no longer condone the situation. The Duke's disapproval highlighted the extent of the damage caused by Edward's actions. The fallout from the St. Andrews incident was swift and unforgiving. By 2002, less than a year after the controversy erupted, Ardent had effectively collapsed. The Guardian's Andy Beckett provided a detailed account of the company's decline. Beckett described Ardent as an industry laughing stock, reflecting the widespread derision Edwards' production efforts faced within the British film world. An anonymous competitor in the industry conveyed the general sentiment, referring to Ardent as a sad joke and criticizing the company's apparent incompetence. The negative reputation of Ardent was a reflection of broader issues within the company. Edward's attempt to leverage his royal status for business success had backfired spectacularly. The industry's lack of respect and the internal failings of the company contributed to its ultimate failure. This period marked a significant low point for Edward's professional ambitions and compounded the personal tensions within the royal family. You might not know this, but Edward gave his candid opinion about William and Kate's life in the royal family. The adage, time heals all wounds, seemed to hold true for the relationship between Prince Edward and Prince William. Despite the tumultuous period in the early 2000s, characterized by professional and personal conflicts, their bond appeared to mend over the years. This reconciliation was particularly evident when William introduced Catherine, Princess of Wales, to the royal family. When Catherine Middleton entered the royal fold, she did so under intense public scrutiny and media attention. The transition into royal life was always going to be a challenge, given the spotlight that follows members of the British monarchy. In this context, Edward's comments about Catherine, made in 2012, 
reflect a supportive and appreciative stance towards his niece by marriage. In an interview with Express, Edward expressed his admiration for Catherine's ability to adapt to her new role. Catherine is doing very well. She has taken to royal life like a duck to water, Edward stated, emphasizing his positive assessment of her performance. His praise extended beyond mere pleasantries. He noted Catherine's graciousness and the pride the family felt in her. This sentiment suggested that Edward had observed Catherine's efforts and achievements with a genuine sense of approval. However, Edward's praise came with a dose of realism. He acknowledged the difficulties Catherine faced, highlighting the intense public and media scrutiny that came with her new role. It was never going to be easy for Catherine as the whole world is watching her every move, Edward cautioned. This comment underscored the challenges that Catherine encountered, navigating the pressures and expectations of royal life. Despite these challenges, Edward remained optimistic about Catherine's future. He expressed confidence in her ability to grow more comfortable and assured in her role as she settled into her public duties. She's dealt with it very well, though. I think Catherine can only grow in confidence now her first official engagements are out of the way, Edward remarked. This statement reflected an understanding of the transition process and an acknowledgement of the learning curve involved in adapting to royal responsibilities. Edward also touched on the supportive role played by the rest of the royal family, particularly Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip. He described them as very protective of the young couple, indicating that their guidance and support were instrumental in helping Catherine adjust to her new life. Edward's comments revealed a sense of solidarity within the family, working to ensure that Catherine's transition was as smooth as possible. Further, Edward highlighted the efforts made by William, Harry, and Charles to ease Catherine's integration into royal life. I think William and Harry, as well as my brother, have tried their best to make her transition into public life as gentle as possible, he concluded. This statement implied a concerted effort within the family to support Catherine, reflecting a more harmonious and cooperative dynamic compared to the tensions of the past. Then, the passing of Queen Elizabeth II on September 8, 2022, was a moment of profound significance for the British royal family, marking the end of an era and ushering in a period of significant transition. Despite the often strained relationships within the family, the gravity of the situation compelled members to put aside their differences and come together during the Queen's final hours. As news emerged that Queen Elizabeth's health had critically deteriorated, the royal family swiftly mobilized to be by her side at Balmoral Castle in Scotland, where she was residing. The urgency of the situation was palpable, and the family's response reflected their deep commitment to the Queen. At the time, Prince Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles were already in Scotland. They were joined by other key members of the royal family, including Prince William, Prince Andrew, Prince Edward, and Sophie, Countess of Wessex. Yahoo! News reported that these family members traveled to Aberdeen Airport and then made the hour-long drive to Balmoral. The journey was a poignant moment of unity, as evidenced by the photographs that captured William behind the wheel of the car, flanked by his aunt Sophie and his uncles, Edward and Andrew. The imagery of the royal family traveling together, despite the tensions and historical grievances that had marked their relationships, was a powerful symbol of their collective grief and solidarity. William's role as the driver of the car emphasized his growing responsibilities within the family, as he prepared to step into a more prominent role following his grandmother's death. The shared journey to Balmoral was a testament to the sense of duty and family cohesion that came to the forefront during this somber period. Queen Elizabeth II passed away at the age of 96, bringing an end to a reign that had spanned seven decades. Her death marked a profound shift for the royal family as Charles ascended to the throne, becoming King Charles III. This transition was immediate and brought about significant changes within the monarchy. William, as the new heir apparent, 
faced the responsibility of supporting his father while also preparing for his future role as king. In the wake of the queen's death, the dynamics within the royal family were inevitably altered. The period of mourning was a time for reflection and adjustment, as the family navigated the transition from the long reign of Elizabeth II to the new era under Charles III. Despite any past grievances or strained relationships, the shared experience of mourning the Queen's passing highlighted the importance of family unity in moments of national and personal significance. One of the key areas of change involves the distribution of royal titles and roles, particularly concerning Prince Edward, Queen Elizabeth's youngest son. For years, it was anticipated that Edward would inherit the Dukedom of Edinburgh, a title that was originally intended for him. This expectation was based on an agreement between Queen Elizabeth, Prince Philip, and Charles, which was supposed to see Edward assume the Dukedom following Philip's death. However, the reality of the situation has evolved significantly since Philip's passing in April 2021. Charles, now King Charles III, has made it clear that his plans for the monarchy diverge from previous expectations. As noted by the Daily Beast, King Charles III has shown a preference for a more streamlined royal family, which has implications for Edward's role. The current king's attitude towards Edward and his wife, Sophie, Countess of Wessex, has been described as somewhat dismissive. Roy Anika, royal editor for the Sunday Times, emphasized that Charles, as the current Duke of Edinburgh, has the authority to determine the future of the title, and it will not be passed on to Edward. This shift in expectations is reflective of a broader strategy by King Charles III to focus on a core group of working royals. The emphasis is increasingly on Prince William and Catherine, Princess of Wales, along with their three children. This new focus aligns with Charles's vision of modernizing and slimming down the monarchy, ensuring that it remains relevant and effective in the contemporary world. The potential reallocation of the Dukedom of Edinburgh is a key aspect of this strategic shift. Richard Kay, writing for the Daily Mail, suggested that King Charles III may bestow the dukedom upon his grandson, Prince Louis, William and Catherine's youngest son. This move would not only continue the lineage of the title, but also reinforce the prominence of the direct heir's family in the royal framework. Prince William and Prince Edward, despite both being working royals, occupy markedly different positions within this intricate hierarchy. Their roles are defined not only by their titles, but also by their places in the line of succession and the weight of their responsibilities. Prince William, as the eldest son of King Charles III, is first in line to the throne. His role as the Prince of Wales places him at the forefront of royal duties and public life, with responsibilities that include representing the monarchy both domestically and internationally. His position also affords him and his immediate family, including Catherine, Princess of Wales, and their three children, a level of security that is unparalleled among other working royals. Reports indicate that they receive round-the-clock protection, including advanced security measures, such as a panic room with an air filtration system and an escape tunnel at their residence, Kensington Palace. These measures are in place due to their imminent future role as the reigning monarch and the significant public and media attention they attract. Furthermore, William and Edward's futures in the monarchy looked very different. William is positioned as the direct heir to the throne, with his three children following him in the line of succession. In contrast, Edward's place in the line is much further removed, currently standing at number 13. This distance not only highlights the difference in their future roles, but also frames the potential challenges in their relationship. One of the significant questions regarding their future interactions is whether Edward will receive the Duke of Edinburgh title, which was held by his late father, Prince Philip. The decision to bestow this title upon Edward rests with King Charles III and eventually with William. If Edward does not receive this title before William ascends the throne, it may influence his standing and role within the royal family. Whether William will choose to retain Edward as a senior royal or alter his position 
is a matter of considerable speculation and will depend on numerous factors, including Edward's contributions to the monarchy and the evolving needs of the royal family. Despite the complexities of their positions and the potential for shifts in their roles, the relationship between Edward and William is not without its positive aspects. Catherine, Princess of Wales, is reportedly influenced by Edward and Sophie, Countess of Wessex, particularly in their roles as parents. Edward and Sophie have maintained a relatively low profile for their children, Lady Louise and James, Viscount Severn, allowing them to grow up away from the intense scrutiny often faced by other royal children. This approach has earned the admiration of other members of the royal family, including Catherine, who may see Edward and Sophie's parenting style as a model of how to balance royal duties with family life. What do you think about the relationship between Prince Edward and Prince William? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this, and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.